Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba, live in the flesh, uh, coming with you with revolutionary greetings. And for all my brothers and sisters watching online, uh, I'm not always in a whole lot of videos because I'm not into the celebrity uh, uh, YouTube thing where I need to be in every video, like I'm some kind of fa fashion model or something. Uh, but what I want to do is just uh, be real with you and talk about the program that we have built uh, starting from 2004. Uh, you know, even go back, I'm going to take it back a little bit, I'm take it back to 2003 when uh, me and my um, uh, associates, brothers, uh, were literally doing study groups and you know, learning about our roots, culture, history, all the beautiful things to make us proud of ourselves and everything. And uh, one thing I got from that, and I was explaining to our brothers, uh, we can't sit here and let's be reading books and studying all day long and talking about Africa. So I tell them let's do a practical journey to start traveling to Africa and you know, documenting our travels, uh, just build up an energy from the ground up and see where it takes us in the future and push for repatriation and uh, nation building. So I started traveling in 2004. I went to Senegal in March of 2004 and then Egypt, April of 2004. And those are my first two foundation journeys. Did a nice long recording of it, uh, which I still have today. I have it on VHS. For those who don't know, that is <laughs> old school videotapes. And I uh, converted it to DVD, but it's something that, you know, these are early, early travels, so YouTube and things like that weren't around, so never, you know, never um, uploaded those things. But those are the things I have in my office to share, and, you know, especially just to show people where we came from and how technology have grown where, uh, you know, where the footage wasn't as good. Now we have like 4K HD. Yeah. So that was the first two countries, and 2005, I went back to Senegal, but also went to South Africa and Kenya. Uh, so that's uh, country uh, number three and four. And in 2006, country number five, I went to was the Gambia. And then uh, December 2006, went to Ghana, and that's uh, laid the foundation. And also, two months before that, which is October of 2006, we started our business called Africa for the Africans. And this. Uh, Put the money in the bank and this uh, this basically hit the ground from there running and used the 2006 journey which is eight of us as a foundation journey and then came back we used all the videos pictures and everything and marketed ourselves to a high level and in october of 2007 uh, we had our second biggest group which was 42 of us so we went from eight to 42 and that's the momentum that we connected with uh, there in ghana it was like uh, country number six so sometimes it takes you to make your way around Africa before you find somewhere that's home but everything connected it just remind me of my roots and culture in Jamaica I was born in Jamaica grew up there and lived there for 11 years and from there grew up in New York City until 18 and so that was like 18 years around being around you know your, your roots and culture as far as your connection to, um, uh, to Jamaica and, and then to just be an adult and then be connected to Ghana and comparing it to all these other countries and finding a way where you can do a, a a real cultural program to get us connected. Uh, so the program that you have experienced here in 2020 was based off that program. And one thing that we always had in common in, in every single tour, um, and it's the only one thing that's in common, which is which is One Africa. I've known him from the inception of 2006, and we've never stopped doing business until, we never stopped doing business still to this day. Uh, so that's a uh, long energy. And so the greetings and the welcome that I received there is because of our dedication of just being about us, not necessarily just being on YouTube and talking and you know showing off and you know things like that. I'm one of the people not into all of that. All those, those things don't matter to me. I'm not trying to get 500 million subscribers or anything like that and billions of views and things like that. that now, what I'm looking to do is touch the hearts of the real hardcore black power people that realize that every day we get up, we dedicate ourselves to our, our people, our children, our ancestors, our, our future, and. You literally just work together and figure it out and do it right. Uh, don't believe in, you know, and everyone is, you know, could believe what they want to believe in, in this YouTube world. I, you know, I'm, and I will say I'm not against certain things, but what we do is just stick to what we're about, you know, which is us. So um, I don't want to even get into those things. But everything we're about, and anyone that want to deal with us, you we want people to know that we're about us and our business. Um, you know, so we're not trying to beef or fight with any other race or, or cultural people and things like that. As a matter of fact, I don't really care what other people think. 
It's just about us, and it has to be about us if we're gonna make a difference and everything. And and I'm just like I'm not looking forward to going back to America, but you know it's what it is. It's another day of business. But my my, my confusion of things and why we do this program so hard is because we have so much great potential, especially in Black America, and that potential is not put out to where we can connect to Africa. So this program is to really connect us from the diaspora to the continent. And while you're on this program, um, as I last talked about 2007, and speed it up to 2020, we have all of these business and investment conference every year from there on, and we bring a lot of people around for networking, for the purpose of us coming together and pull our resources together. And this has been the best connection that we've worked out from having a citizenship conference to the repatriation investment conference to the land tour and the connection with our chief to get access to land so we can build our community. So all of those things take you know, time to build and work out. But once you find a country that you want to do this in, you just build those relationships and Ghana has been worked out perfect. But since Ghana, I've also traveled to a few other countries just to make sure that I'm not caught into a world of this, you know, it's just Ghana. But I've literally compared to the next set of countries we went to was Togo, Benin, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, which made country number 10. And the closest uh, second is Tanzania based on this Zanzibar Island, the national parks, and just a big, big beautiful uh, country where people are you know, building the country up, working the roads out in the fields, the farms, and things like that. Uh, so that's the Africa that I've seen and envisioned from studying books from some of our greatest minds, like uh, you know, Amos Wilson, uh, which is you know favorite psychology. He put things in perspective, um, you know, I feel the right way, and his book, the blueprint for black power will always be you know, my black power revolutionary bible because uh, all it talks about is black economics and things like that and when we realize that the people who are oppressing us they use our economics against us they build the factories they build this they build that you work then they then you get the money and you you give it back to them and then the cycle repeats itself and things like that uh, so when we're connecting people together the higher power of energy we're connecting is for us to build black enterprises all the factories, everything that we need, um, it needs to be done by us. Uh, and if we don't do it, the Chinese and the Indians uh, are been in the gates because uh, the British Empire um, and other um, nations brought them here in countries like South Africa, all over uh, East Africa, and uh, you know, if, as indentured servants. And now they are, you know, they feel like they, they you know, they, they love Africa and they feel like, well, it's their chance to take over and everything like that. So I'm always uh, telling my brothers and sisters in the African diaspora, it is up to us to, to part and connect with our own brothers and sisters and for also the African nationals who have moved to different parts of America, Europe. Um, it's also yeah, your position, your job also to come back and connect to the continent and for us to put these programs together to, to do these things that we need to do so our children have a bright future where we can this, you know, as a matter of fact, all you see when you drive around countries like Ghana and any other country I've been to is you see, you see bricks, you see sand. People are literally building up. So within the next 10 years, you know, the African continent will be the future. We have the youngest population in the entire world, which is a great thing, and um, and you know we have a chance to share all of our great experience in African diaspora and also on African continent with our children and put things in place. So one of the programs that I've always had in place is where we go to uh, orphanage schools and things like that. And the things that really frustrated me the first time I came here when, when I went into orphanage and I saw white dolls and I removed the white dolls, ripped the head off the body parts and trashed every single last one of them and recruited my crew to bring black dolls for the next uh, 10 years and uh, and things like that. And you know, sometimes people may just you know, look at certain things and say, hey, this guy is, you know, but you know, um, I don't sit around and talk about the things that we need to do. We just get up every day and work it. I literally get up every day and work in essence for us. I don't give a damn about anybody else. I mean, because people don't care about us. And everyone I seem to be in the world, all of the race of people, whether they're trying to integrate with us or whatever, they all have their agenda. Uh, so from interracial relationship to homosexuality, to all the things that sometimes people are a little shaky to talk about, it's all in essence to destroy what we as a people need to be doing building our divine connection the content we have suffered enough already so i'm just reaching out to the callings of all my brothers and sisters in the african diaspora not saying that you just should just come on the tours and everything but this is a good way to bridge you and connect you uh, so we'll put a program together so whether you're coming on a tour with us or you want to connect with us with all the other people that you're going to see videos on as far as at our business conference and so on we're putting this thing together and the more of us band together and use our resources together we can make this happen but if you think you're going to stay in America and you think it's just going to be okay because 
a jackass Biden, uh, Jim Crow Biden, or white devil Trump, or whoever, I don't even know who's gonna be the president, who's not gonna be the president. I'm like over it and things like that. Um, but you know, we literally, um, we, you know, the politics was gonna save us. You know? I'll be living in Jamaica, you know? But uh, it's just, it's just not um, and the same game people play with us. So I'm here to, to share our practical experience of what we have done as a small unit and me and a few small groups of brothers and sisters that have worked together with so many other groups of people. And if we can make this level of impact, other people can with more resources than us. Uh, so that's all I'm uh, saying to everyone that's watching is let's be practical and stop, all, stop running your mouth and talking all that stuff and, and everything if you're not gonna do anything or back it up because at the end of the day, people gonna look at, look at you as just a shit-talking punk. You know, and a lot of you fools on YouTube want to run your mouth. Some of you want to come on you know, to Ghana and speak negative stuff and things like that. Like we have certain punks that live in DC and other places, Atlanta. And you know, I don't see the punk ass uh, running around with video cameras and doing interviews on the bridge with all the homeless people and all the shacks of crackheads and all the other crazy psychotic meth heads that's all over in all these states and cities and things like that. And they have the nerve to come to my beloved Ghana. My, you know, my Jamaican African and be disrespectful. So all you fools out there, don't do, don't, don't play yourself because what you're gonna do, you're gonna jeopardize your lives. I've been coming to this country for 14 years and I get nothing but love and respect because we show love and respect and we don't, we carry ourselves a certain way. Uh, and you know, so for those who are trying to divide the energy, this um, just find, just find a better hobby um, because you, you're gonna, you're gonna be out in the public and people are gonna, you know, people are gonna say, hey, that's the person we saw on YouTube disrespecting our country. When you know, when they come from you know, somewhere that they don't have, they don't have the rights that they think they are. So it's you know, it's a serious thing I've seen you know, when I wasn't able since I left from Ghana and other people just started just getting up and going to you know different countries and everything and embarrassing themselves, whether it's the Gambia, Ghana, or you know whichever country. You know, so I'm telling you, family, for those people you see how they're doing it, don't support them. You know, and you know, I know sometimes we sit around like the entertainment and the, the gossip and drama and things like that. Not with all of that. You know. You know, we need to build, we need to be serious about our revolution, serious about what we're doing. And people that's in our way, we need to stop supporting them. People that are race traders or black devils, you know, the, the people who are um, up front and most enemy because they're just, you know, they can just hide off and blend in. And that's why I always tell some people, any groups and things that we have, and when we find these people, we remove them. If you come on our community and uh, you're a pedo or you're whatever, all these other things, we're going to remove you. And so everything that we have is, you know, we ask people to read two things and be clear because we have to operate in a level of order and structure. You know, I was, a, I was an aircraft technician in the Navy for four and a half years and just very impressed by the training, very impressed by the logistic operation. And I was like, yo, if these groups of white devils could do this, you know, you know, you know, what's wrong with us? Why can't we put our resources together? And with, with all the challenges and everything that we have against us, the most important thing is what we have is us. And long as we decide to deal with us and focus on us, we're good. Um, and I don't expect all of us in the whole population to be like that. And you know, based on the fact that we've it's been consistent, con consistently divided for, for generations and centuries and so on. You know, but definitely have to just let our folks know that uh, you know you see what we're doing. We're serious about our business. Come join the forces, connect together, put our energy together. And for those who just don't mean good, to stay out of the way. Either you stay out of aware or get run over, and that's that simple. You know? And, you know? So, much respect to all my real black power folks out there. Let's get up every day and do the work, and not up there trying to be YouTube celebrities and things like that. And let's keep it a strong family, and we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing, and you know, we're gonna build a nice bridge to where, when you're ready to live, do business in Africa, you have a perfected system. But right now, what we're doing is the framework, and the people that we're working with is who we have access to work with. I know some people are waiting to see what we're gonna do with this community and how we're gonna go, but it's fine. Uh, not everybody's gonna be you know, jumping on the pioneer move. But one thing I gotta tell everyone that's listening right now, the cost of land in Africa over 15 years ago was in the hundreds, now it's in the thousands. So you're gonna be paying tens of thousands of dollars for plots uh, in the next uh, few years, because uh, Africa is growing. Uh, so any family, you can always connect with us on our website, africafortheafricans.org. It has all of our tours and investment information. Um, accessible uh, via email uh, and also uh, you know, text on our WhatsApp uh, line and things like that. And other than that, family, um, 
gonna keep it real and keep it strong and we'll be available to connect with you when you're ready.